Well, turning now to weather, the Alabama Forestry Commission has issued a fire danger advisory for all Alabama counties in the News 5 viewing area. This comes after several fires in our area. Those counties are Mobile, Baldwin, Washington, Clark, Monroe, Conecuh, and Escambia counties. Our conditions have been really dry, but today we finally got some rain and a little bit last night, too. Let's check in with meteorologist Thomas Geboy, who's back in the studio yes. with us to talk about this rain. Thomas? Yeah, the last 24 hours have been exactly what we needed, but mm -hmm. we could still use a little bit more. So, if Mother Nature, if you're listening, any more rain will be beneficial. And I know that later on in the week we get another chance of rain, but this morning brought some soaking rain. To some areas that need it, the, need it the most, especially in our coastal counties. Now, that swath of the heavier rain is now moving away from Okaloosa County. Meanwhile, there are still a few scattered showers and a few rumbles of thunder out there. Even though, even though that main swath of rain is starting to be in the process of moving away, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're done for rain for today. It looks like for those of you that are in Okaloosa County, still seeing some moderate to heavy rainfall. For those of you in Pensacola, you're likely going to be seeing a few more showers work their way towards you. Also, scattered showers throughout Baldwin and Escambia County. And then in our inland communities, also starting to see more scattered showers and a few rumbles of thunder. If you notice, there's almost this counterclockwise motion. That's because all of this today is being driven by a low pressure in the mid levels and upper levels of the atmosphere. By tomorrow, that's going to be moving away, and that will allow for some drier conditions for our Tuesday. As for downtown Pensacola, that's a beautiful sky with, with cumulus clouds, mid level clouds, 78 degrees. It's a warm afternoon with the southwest breeze at 10 miles per hour. And in Orange Beach, the surf is still rough. Beaches are flying anywhere from yellow flags to red flags. So keep that in mind if you're going to be heading to the beach today. But conditions do calm for tomorrow, and then we will see rain chances kind of ramp back up for the middle to end of the week. And then by the weekend, we could be talking about some summer like weather. We'll talk about all of that coming up in your forecast in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Thomas. And of course, download that first alert storm team weather app to keep that radar in your pocket. It is free in the App Store and on Google Play. The coronavirus pandemic has been stressful for adults, but children often experience stress and anxiety during these times as well. And today we are talking with Carrie Watley, a professional counselor who helps people cope with anxiety and stress. And she joins us live now. Carrie, thanks for being with us. I'm glad we're talking about children because the adults have been really stressed out, but a lot of children have really had their worlds turned upside down as well, being at home. They have, they have, and some of them actually miss going back to school at this point. But children struggle to communicate anxiety the same way that an adult would. So instead of saying, I'm anxious or I'm overwhelmed or I'm stressed, they might say, my stomach hurts or my head hurts. Or you might see their behaviors revert back to things that they stopped doing years ago. So, for example, with really young children, maybe they've been potty trained for a while and now they're having accidents again. Maybe they were sleeping really well in their own room and now they want to be in with mom and dad. All of those can be a sign of anxiety and increased stress. So giving them a little extra attention when they're doing really positive things can be a big help. Yeah, let's talk about how to help them deal with this anxiety in a more positive way. How do we do that? Well, the first thing, of course, is modeling for the kids a great way to handle anxiety. But, of course, that means you have to be handling it pretty well yourself. So that's good motivation to do the things that help you take care of you so that you can show up as a good parent for your kids. But there's an activity I really like to do with kids called the worry box. And so you can get a shoe box or anything like that. And you can decorate it really neat. And you talk about what does it mean to be anxious or worried. And it helps kids understand the idea of we might have worries, but we don't need to carry those worries around with us. So they will write down things that they're worried about and put it in the box. Or they might draw a picture and put it in the box. But once they have put their worry in the worry box that they made, the goal is for them not to have to think about it anymore and or to be able to talk, talk about it in a really positive way at a specific time instead of thinking about it all the time. Okay, so if they keep bringing that worry back up, then what do you do, the worry that they put in that box? Well, really validating that it's okay to worry and giving them reassurance that they, they can have permission to be human. It's okay to feel this way. You can tell them that adults feel this way sometimes too, but it's all going to be okay. Just giving them that reassurance and then also allowing them to be nervous without um, you know, judging them or telling them, oh, that's silly, don't worry about that. You know, just encouraging them can, can be very helpful. Carrie Watley is a counselor in our community. Carrie, thanks so much for that great advice today.